So I just did this whole video and forgot to push record on my microphone. So we're doing it again. <laughs> What's going on, guys? This is Steven. I'm back again. We've got another video today. Today's video is four things you can do to practice if you cannot make noise or you don't have a drum set. Coming up. Once again, I'm going to go through this really quickly so we're not in this video all day long. We're talking about the four things you can do to practice when you either don't have drums or you can't play loud. You live in an apartment, got new kids, got a wife who doesn't like that, your parents don't want you playing loud, all of that stuff. So we're gonna, I'm going to cover a couple things. Once again, these are some things that I've done personally and also some things that I've recommended to some students of mine. So the first one is mental practice. Mental practice includes visualization, air drumming, and muscle memory exercises. So when I say muscle memory exercises, I mean actually the horizontal and vertical movement. So just the rudimental movement, rudimental patterns, and the actual horizontal, the reaching, the actual, I don't know how to, I don't know how to say that. All I can say is the horizontal, the horizontal motion and the vertical motion. Uh, air drumming helps out with that a lot. Now, once again, when you're air drumming, you may not get like the full on the the feel of the impact of the actual drum kit but you will get a better sense of what you want to do and how your body may react to that from a muscular feeling body awareness kind of <laughs> kind of sensation that's one thing that you want to make sure that you're including you can actually include that in your regular practice no weird echo from symbols number two wait that was weird number two hand practice so hand practice includes Table practice, muscle memory exercises, and finger management. Now, when I say table practice, I mean it doesn't necessarily have to be a table. You can practice on your legs. You can use a table. You can do any surface that you can touch with your hands. It can be a brick wall. You can sit there and do this. You really want to sit there. It's like, like run through your rudiments, run through your hand and foot patterns, uh, run through some any combination that you were thinking about. You can run through it with your hands on your on your legs. Just right there. That's that's one foot on the ground, two hands on my legs. That's it. And sit down and work those patterns out that way. You work out. I've worked out a lot of linear patterns that way. And I actually sat behind drums for a while and was like, you know what? I need a second. Let me jump out from behind the drums and actually work on these right here. Muscle memory exercises. That fall. Those fall right into the category of of air drumming. So once again, that's the same. That's pretty much the same thing. I I don't know if if y'all want to see if y'all want me to explain more about that. Leave it in the comments below, and I'll make another video about that one. Uh, finger management. Finger management. Wait, where is it at? Finger management is a big one. Um, people really emphasize the use of the fingers, and I'll I'll talk more about finger use. But finger management is something that comes in really handy if you know what you're doing. Don't know what you're doing, or you're just using it just to use it. You really could strain something really badly, actually. Um, so uh, one, I'll give you two finger management exercises. One, you hold the stick. Between your thumb and your palm, not like this, but like hold it straight out like you're hold, just holding it. And then you tap the stick four times with each finger. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And come back. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You can even do it on your thumb if you want. Right? You can do that on your forearm. You can do that on a pad. I, this, is, this is my hand, not a pad. Right? You can do that just about anywhere. It, if, if you have sticks available, you can do that. If you do not have sticks available or you're brand new and you just. If you do not, if you do not have sticks available and you're brand new, then finger exercises are still going to help you. So you can do the same thing, but you just touch your thumb. So it's like, you see my finger? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, right? So one, two, three, four, three, two. That's what I say. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. That's what I say. So you go one, two, three, four, three, two, one. And you just go around. You do it in both hands. You can do it. You get the picture, right? <laughs> All right. But just work with touching your thumb in, in some type of a pattern. Just trying, just really just working that, working that out. All right. Um, I'm trying to, I want to make sure this video doesn't get too long. Um, next, number three, we have different practice surfaces. So, Remo makes a silent stroke drum head. They call it a silent stroke drum head because it doesn't make a lot of noise. 
This is Remo Silent Stroke Drumhead Sound. This is a Remo Coded Ambassador. Listen. Coded Ambassador. Wait. Oh, God. Hold on, wait. And then Silent Stroke. Not a lot of noise. The Silent Stroke heads don't feel exactly like regular drum heads. They give you a little more rebound than normal, but it's way better than having to sit down on just one practice pad. To act, you can actually work on multiple surfaces like it's an actual drum set and still get the the general idea. I'll leave a link uh, in the description to the Silent Stroke drum heads so you can get them if you don't see them in like your local music store or drum shop or whatever. Uh, next, if you don't have Silent Stroke drum, head, drum heads, you can always invest in a really nice practice pad or you know, some, some type of practice pad that's rubber. If you can't make a lot of noise, um, they make pads that actually make noise like a drum. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of those, but if you like that, that's cool. Uh, it's just another practice surface. I've had my practice pad for about 15 years. It's a Remo, not a Remo. It's a real, what is it? What was I saying? Oh, I was saying that I had my, I've had my practice pad for about 15 years. It has been through everything. And it's a it's an HQ real field practice pads. Got two sides, one side soft, one side hard. Just practice pads, bro. Once again, I'll leave a link in the description below to a nice uh, to a couple nice practice pads that you can get. Um, some inexpensive ones and some some ones that kind of get up there. DW actually makes actually makes I don't know if they make it anymore, but they used to a whole practice pad set, um, which is to me one of the better things to get. Um, I'll talk about electronic drum sets as well, uh, but just not right now because I've got a few gripes with electronic drum sets that we don't have time for in this video. So, <laughs> all right. And lastly, pillows. If you don't have access to any other stuff and you broke, don't have no money, all, all you could afford was two sticks from Guitar Center. You got pillows at home, you got a mattress, you got clothes. Work on the soft surfaces. You just play on pillows. Uh, you can actually set up pillows in the like on your like you set up pillows on your bed like it's a drum set and just hit the floor with your right leg. Once again, that falls right in the same category as the table practice, but you actually can use sticks this time. And if you want to be you, you want like a Jedi mind trick kind of ninja art style um, practice technique, do the pillows on the bed with just your hands. If you don't have no sticks, you can do this and that. It's kind of like playing congas, but it's really not. It's like you're really working out that motion. Because once again, we want to just make, if we can't actually play the surface, we want to make sure that we're working the motion out. If we work the motion out, we want half the battle, okay? I know I'm kind of going really quickly, but I want to make sure, I want to keep where we're at. We just hit 10 minutes. I want to make sure that we keep this video under, I want to try to keep it under 15 minutes, okay? Uh, and we're, we're really close. The last one is drum aerobics or pretty much just general exercise. Now the first three that I mentioned are really good for drums specifically. And if you don't have anywhere to practice, you cannot practice at home. You can't practice on your own drum kit. You don't have access to one at that particular point in time. Those are things that you can do. The first three, number four is something you should be doing anyway. Okay. Number four is something you should be doing anyway, and it's just general exercise. When I say drum aerobics, I mean I mean things that work on wrist mobility, calves, ankle uh, mobility, um, lower lower back stability, uh, some quads, uh, heavily on wrist mobility and forearm uh, strength, and and being able to maintain those muscles keeping them strong because those are the ones that we use the most because mostly we're sitting down, we're using the calf a lot, you're holding, you've got tension in all of these places, even your shoulders and traps, rear deltoids. Your your body is fully involved when you're playing a drum set, especially if you're trying to play fast, and especially if you're trying to play loud. Please do not neglect just general exercise. You should have some type of a resistance plan uh, in place for yourself if it's just push-ups, sit-ups, and squats at home. You should be doing something every day for your body so that you can make sure that you can stay in peak playing uh, condition. I'll go into further detail about a workout if you guys want, uh, but 
it's a million fitness YouTubers out here and people with fitness plans. You can watch them for free. Just go watch them and look up their particular body, the particular body part, and check that out. Uh, but please make sure you're doing you you have an exercise regimen, some type of exercise, and aerobic. Uh, some type. Please make sure you have some type of a resistance and cardio regimen that you follow because this instrument is really taxing on the body. Ask at every doctor I know is like that. It's very taxing. Okay. So yeah, that's it. I hope we stayed, yeah, I think we stayed under 15 minutes. I think like 12 minutes or something. All right, so those are my four suggestions. Um, you guys let me know in the comments. Maybe if I, maybe if I missed something, maybe uh, I mentioned something that you use all the time, or maybe you just have better suggestions than me. Put them down in the comments, man. I would, I'd love to read them. Um, thank y'all for watching. That's all. I'll be loading another video next week. I think didn't miss anything oh yeah like if you're new like which you probably are comment subscribe and share this video with someone maybe you know somebody who lives in an apartment and they can't practice you guys uh maybe you know someone who lives in an apartment and they can't practice or maybe you know someone who's a student and they need help practicing because they just don't have time they don't have access to a drum set or you know somebody who works a whole lot just share this video man uh, give me some feedback. Tell me what you guys want to see, and I'll make the video. I'll see y'all later.